Hey guys, my name is Ben. Welcome back to episode 40, 54 of your bucket plugging tutorials. Today we're going to be looking at game states. So, in the MOTD, you'll see like this game is in game, and this game is in lobby, and this game is starting, and stuff like that. We're going to look at how all that is done, how that is the, the about the uh, pros and cons of doing it in different ways, and why to choose it in the way that I choose. Now, we're going to set up our normal class here, which is going to make it extend Java plugin implement listener because you know we want to conserve space. Let's pick a new class and call it game state. Now some people do game states in enumerations, which I've done a tutorial on. So they'd set an enumeration and they'd get the value from that enumeration and set it as the game state uh, title. But I, I find that to be awkward because you cannot customize it in a way that has colors and stuff like that. So the way I like doing it is just making final static variables which we can color and stuff like that and it's it's a efficient way of doing it so first of all we're gonna make our actual variables so we're gonna make a public static final variable uh, string sorry and we're gonna call this like in underscore lobby so in lobby now by convention in Java uh, static final variables always go at the top of your class and they're always in capitals and spaces are defined by underscores um, and this is going to be equal to you know our lobby stuff, which we'll put in later. And then we're just going to make a few more. So let's just paste this down. So in lobby, like in in game, uh, post game, uh, I, I don't know, um, game resetting. Uh, is it one two or two two game resetting? So anyway, uh, so this is our game state, and what we're going to make down here is a private string game state. So this is actually going to hold what state the game is in. Now what we want to do is I like to make a start variable like a norm or start a method like I normally do. So private static uh, string starter, uh, and all it does is it returns the start of our thing and how it will always start. So return chat color uh, dot like dark gray uh, with an opening squiggly bracket plus chat color dot color dot gold and you know our game name. Plus chat color dot dark gray plus the closing bracket like that and you know that that's just how I like to um do these things just so it makes it look nice and we'll, we'll actually use that later uh, and then we're gonna make two more methods uh, this one's gonna be a public void which is gonna be set game state so this is how we're gonna set the game state uh, and it's gonna take a string with a state in it uh, and the game state which is the uh, the private string we made up there going to be equal to the ver the uh, uh, the ver the string variable that we've passed in when using this uh, this method or function. Uh, we also want to make another one which is private or public string get state. So we're going to get the state of the game, and you know we're going to return game state because that's what the state will be. Now what we want to do is we want to add some stuff to this. So we're going to say starter uh, starter plus uh, you know game is in game and then if we just copy this uh, and paste it down here we're gonna add some actual like how the game will look so where we'll say so game is in game or game is in lobby lobby that one was lobby so game is in lobby I can't type today game is in game game is in post game uh, game is resetting like that. So this is all we actually want in this class. This is all we want. We don't want anything else in this class. We just want that. And how we actually use this is if we go back into our main like game class and we say at event handler uh, like that event handler event handler uh, public void on server uh, list ping. So server list ping event event and this gets called every time someone like pings the server or you know refreshes and it comes up and it tells you what delay you have to the server and stuff we're gonna say event dot set motd and that's gonna be the game state I put gam state didn't I yeah I did that's gonna annoy me the game state and then we can just hover over that and rename compilation unit to game state cool and now over here we're going to make a, a private uh, static um, game state variable and in our on enable we're going to say uh, sorry, game state game 
steak. We're going to say, uh, what the hell? There we go. We're going to say game state. If I can type game state uh, is equal to a new game state. Like that. So we're instantiating the game state class uh, into our little object here. And we're going to say, we're going to set the MOTD to be game state dot get state like that so it's going to get the state of the game and it's going to send it to them as the MOTD and you know that's that's how that works and if we ever wanted to, to like change the state of the game uh, how I normally do it is we go if I'm just going to do it on a command right now obviously this is outrageously unbelievably customizable I am doing these tutorials because you have been like oh show us how we did this show us how you did that and I want you to learn how to make your own mini games because I get so many requests like oh can you make a mini game for me I'm like well, if you could, you could try and, and learn and stuff, and I want you to learn how to do it because you know once you do it, once you've got the fundamentals for it, it's actually very simple. So, if say the label uh, equals ignore case uh, in game, then what we could say is we would say game state dot set game state, and then we do game state or uh, both capitals the name of the class, and we'd say in game like that. So that would actually get this in game variable here. It would set the game state to be st it would set it to be the game name in these brackets plus game is in game like that so that is how that happens and I mean obviously you can change this uh, very much so in your plugin you can make it so when the game starts it would it would do some stuff uh, so yeah thank you for watching guys remember uh, if you don't understand comment on the bucket forums comment on this video people will help you message me if you still can't find out and I'll be sure to try and help you as quickly as I can. Um, next tutorial will be something, I don't know, I'll probably end up recording it now. Uh, I'm trying to get quite a few out in the next few days because we have had a, a low down on the videos, which has been for various reasons. Um, one being my computer broke. Look at it. Dead. <sighs> so anyway, thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you next time.